Brees Hall, you have the upgraded O-line, you have Garrett Wilson, you've got Aaron Rodgers, and they made them look like not a threat. Now on this team, you do have Justin Jefferson, but I feel like you'll be able to lock him up. Um, Sam Darnold, I'm not as worried about, even though he had a great game last week. He was facing the Giants, the, the 49ers for the best team in the NFC, and I don't think that Aaron Jones inspires the same amount of fear as someone like Brees Hall, in my opinion. And the Vikings defense, I don't think that they've been tested. Uh, Daniel Jones is nothing like the 49ers offense. The 49ers, they can run the ball down your throat like they did with the Jets. They can throw it to any of their star wideouts. Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. Uh, it is going to be a true test, and I don't think that the Vikings are going to pass, so I'm going to give a victory here to the 49ers. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots. Now, both of these teams are coming off of a victory. The Seahawks getting a victory over the Denver Broncos in week one, and the Patriots getting a victory over the Bengals. So, a few things to consider here. <coughs> Uh, or, you know, just like a, 
a lack of talent, you could say. Oh, with Jacoby Brissett. Um, I, I don't know if I was saying Jacoby Jones. I, I meant Jacoby Brissett. Um, and yeah, I, I do appreciate him as a leader. I do think that he will continue to get the starts, but I am not fully confident in his ability to lead multiple great drives through the passing game. So if we have to play this game from behind, it will be much tougher. Uh, and so yeah, I'm going to give it to the Seahawks in this one. Next up, we've got a game between the New York Giants and the Washington Commanders. This is a game that's going to take place at the Washington Commanders' home stadium. <coughs> they played on the road against Tampa Bay last week, losing by a decent margin. I think it was 20-37, something like that. And Jaden Daniels had an up-and-down debut. Couldn't really get the ball to his wide receivers and uh, wideouts all that well, but had a pretty impressive showcase on the ground. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr. looked pretty good in the rushing game as well. And then defensively, they did get cut up very badly by Baker Mayfield and those wide receivers. But on the bright side, uh, the Giants' defense is not nearly as good, I will say, um, considering how they let the Vikings do them in Week 1. And the Giants' offense is also not comparable to the Buccaneers. I think in every way, the Giants are worse. The Giants are proving one of the worst teams with that week one performance we can see uh i don't i don't even know necessarily the commanders are more inexperienced so maybe in the giant's eyes this is an easier matchup for them but i still do think that the commanders are the better team here they played better in week one uh Jaden daniels got that first experience out of the way i think he is geared up for his first victory and it'll come in week two then after that, we've got a matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Carolina Panthers. Um, and yeah, talking back to the previous matchups for these teams, the Chargers won, I think, 22-10 over the Las Vegas Raiders. Were able to establish that run game that they were hoping for uh, with a committee of J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. And the Panthers, on the other side, I don't think that they have any real offensive identity yet. Nothing that they did in that game uh, was good. Every, they're basically starting from scratch. I don't think that there was any positives to take away from in that game, really. Uh, so the Panthers, yes, they get to play at home, but offensive line is still pretty bad. You did not really develop chemistry with anyone. Maybe Bryce Young to Xavier Leggett. There was a little bit there, but... Um, it's, it's like a blank slate for them, and whereas the Chargers, I think they're coming off the high of a good victory, and they know that this is going to be a rather, you know, feast, feast-worthy matchup for their defensive ends, um, and if you could have Derek Carr and that Saints offense do that to the Panthers, I think that the Chargers are in a similar position. They don't have, like, a clear-cut guy like Chris Olave, but Chris Olave didn't even play that crazily last week. He was, he had a quiet day. Uh, it was other guys like Rashid Shaheed, uh, and I think that the Chargers, Justin Herbert definitely can throw deep passes and things like that, so you saw that the Panthers did not do anything to stop the run, uh, and Derek Carr was able to pass the deep passes. I think that's going to be the same game this week. I'm going to go with the Chargers in that one. Next up, we have a game between the Saints and the Cowboys. Now, this one will be interesting. Both teams coming off very impressive victories in Week 1. The Saints, I thought, would be in a... I, honestly, both games. I thought that the Saints versus the Panthers, and I thought that the Cowboys versus the Browns would be closer games. I did think both of those teams would come off victorious, but they impressed me. They had very impressive showcases. The Saints, I think, on the offensive side of the ball, they did a better job. And the Cowboys, I think that in all stages, they look good. Um, it's really hard for me to assess either team necessarily. Like, the Browns are playing with an injured Deshaun Watson. Or, not injured, but like Deshaun Watson is coming back from injury. It's his first game. I can't tell if the Cowboys defense was good or if he was terrible. And then with the Saints, I can't tell if their defense was good or if Bryce Young is just still not good yet. Um, it's hard to fully assess how good their defenses are. Offensively, I still would give the edge to the Cowboys. Uh, you know, with C. 
pass. They didn't have to try as hard in the second half, and that's why the score looked as close at a as it was, but you're taking a team that was coached its way into the playoffs and completely dismantling them. They got six sacks. So, I'm gonna go out and say that the Cowboys get a home victory here and give the Saints their first loss. After that, we have a matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Green Bay Packers. Now, this is not as joyous for Packers fans as I think they were hoping for. It would have been a very cool matchup between Anthony Richardson and Jordan Love, two star young QBs for their teams, uh, showing off their abilities. But with Jordan Love out and Malik Willis starting, I am not really willing to give the Packers a chance. Uh, Anthony Richardson took this team last week, and he didn't play his best football, you know, 9 of 19 passing. But even then, he threw 60-yard passes, a 60-yard touchdown bomb, rushed for touchdown, uh, and put up 27 points on the Houston Texans defense, made it a 27-29 to loss. Very impressive in the loss. Now, the Packers also were impressive in their loss, but that was with their captain. Now, they don't have him. And so, I think, just due to injury, it has to be the Colts here. The Colts are going to be the better team. <coughs> Uh, 
place is not close to the best defense he's ever going to see, whereas that was very realistically the best defense that Caleb Williams has ever seen his in his career. He has never seen defensive linemen that can move that fast or anything like that. It was the first full test for the NFL, whereas for Rodgers, I think this is a very run-of-the-mill average defense, especially after coming off of a game against the 49ers defense. I'm um, given, given the Jets a big victory here. Next up, we've got a game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, <laughs> so far the Lions are just repeating their playoff run. You have the Rams in week one, we have the Bucks in week two, and just like the playoffs, I think that this will be a fun game. The Buccaneers. The Buccaneers looked very impressive in week one, I will say. Um, <coughs> these guys were able to chop it up. Baker make out of four touchdown passes is remarkable. One of the best QB performances in a week that was very lackluster all around. Jared Goff on the other hand, he had an okay week threw for a touchdown. Um, to Jameson Williams also threw kind of a costly pick. They were only able to win it in overtime. Now this is also back-to-back -back playoff caliber teams, whereas the Buccaneers did get to face against a rookie, Jaden Daniels, who wasn't able to throw the ball, like, all that well, uh, not the best completion percentage, barely able to get it to his wideouts, and I think that the wide receivers are better, the running backs are better, the, the commanders had a good amount of success rushing the ball both between their quarterback and the running back. And I think that the Lions have one of the best backfields in the NFL in David Montgomery and Demir Gibbs. So that is something that they can definitely utilize to their advantage. Now the Buccaneers, they did a good job of shutting down Terry McLaurin, but I really can't imagine back-to-back -back games where Amon Ross St. Brown is out of it like that. Like he was nowhere to be found in that game targeted early on and then targeted at the end of the game. In the middle of the game, it was more so the Jamison Williams show, but we just didn't hear from him. And I think that this is this is one of those guys, you paid him all that money, you are going to get him a lot of design touches in this game, and he is going to pop out. And I think the Lions defense was kind of impressive. Uh, yes, Darian Arnold had a lot of pass interference calls and holding calls, but I think he'll learn from that. He's still adjusting from college to NFL rules, but the addition of old Buccaneer himself, Carlton Davis, does make the secondary better, so they're better at defending against the run and the pass. I don't think that the Rams had the best rushing game, and I think passing the ball, Cooper Cup certainly went off, but uh, But, you know, it's Cooper Cup. Uh, I think that the Lions will manage to hold up. Um, yeah, as long as they're able to consistently run the ball on the Buccaneers' defense, I don't think that their offense will freeze up like they did against the Rams. I think that the Rams, in the middle of the game, did a good job of really pressing pause on this Lions offense. And I think that the Lions know that they can't let that happen again. So... It'll be a great game, and I could see the Buccaneers going out on top, but personally, I'm going to give it to the Lions here. <coughs> After that, we have a matchup between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens here. Ravens are going to be mad. They're going to be playing very mad after that game to play on opening night to be so close to victory against uh, the best team in the NFL. You can tell that they're going to be seething with anger. Uh, 
Chargers were able to rush as much as they were able to. I think that this is the week that we see Derrick Henry pop off a little bit more. Lamar Jackson already had a great rushing game. I think that he draws it back a little bit, but I think that they're going to toy with the Raiders. I think that it's going to be a matchup where they are mad. They have something to prove. They lost and they're upset about it. They're going to go out there right off the beat. Like, I think three straight touchdown drives to start the game. Obviously, it might not work out in that way, but Raiders only put up 10 points in week one. That just didn't look good. Their backfield is kind of a mess with Samir White not getting as many touches as Alexander Madison. They're going to be playing from behind, um, <clears throat> and they just couldn't get their star receivers the ball. Jacoby Myers, not a good game. Devontae Adams, very negligible performance. Brock Bowers had very solid debut considering how tight ends did, but I think that the Ravens are just, they're going to have a field day with this Raiders team, so I'm going to give it to the Ravens. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Arizona Cardinals. Now, this game could be a lot of fun, you know, with the Cardinals going out against a pretty tough opponent in the Buffalo Bills, enjoying that, like, it's not the same team as last year. We're not here to mess around. They get like big lead early, and then they kind of also forget how to play offense. Gar uh, Kyler Murray starts off the game hot as a passer, and then just abandons it. Like he was not able to connect on his throws after a certain point. We finished with 160 or so yards, and couldn't get the ball at all to Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think that will be the same case, but I do think that the Rams did a really good job of mitigating the threat of Amon Ross St. Brown, and if they could take him out of the game, then you have to figure that they're going to be able to take the Cardinals' best weapon away as well. Uh, Sam Laporta also not that impressive in Week 1. He had an okay game. Uh, Trey McBride, I think that they would be able to take him away. So the Rams, based on what they just faced and how they fared, having to ultimately be defeated in overtime, even with the loss of Cooper, uh, Bukunakua mid-game, I think that they know that they can contain this Cardinals offense. The Cardinals offense went off in Week 1 against the Bills, but the Bills also facing a more depleted team than they had last year. The, lot, the Rams on defense doing a very commendable job against the Lions offense that was a top in the league last year. I think that the Rams defense will be able to do a solid job on this Cardinals offense and then Rams offensively uh, they have a true wide receiver one. The the Cardinals, I don't I don't know if they knew who to cover because the Bills didn't have a true wide receiver one one. Josh Allen is kind of just able to spread the wealth to whoever, um, but I don't have necessarily faith in the Cardinals to shut down Cooper Cup. I think that is going to be a very strong connection that exists. Uh, and then running the ball, Kyron Williams might be able to see a little bit more success. The, the Lions run defense is one of the best from last year. The Cardinals last year, they were one of the worst, and so I think Rams offensively get their way a little bit more, and they're able to uh, keep the Cardinals defense super, or Cardinals offense suppressed. I'm going to give it to the Rams in this matchup. And next up, we have a game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Kansas City Chiefs. Bengals are going to have to whip up a miracle to win this game after their week one performance. They looked awful. Um, now you can give credit to the Patriots defense if that's what you think was the real reason behind it. You could say it was for D. Higgins being out. Joe Burrow always starts slow. Uh, I don't know. You could say a lot of things, but the Chiefs didn't look bad. <laughs> they, at no point in that first game, did they really look bad. They were able to win, put up 27 points. Um, Travis Kelsey, not as dominant as usual, but Patrick Mahomes, still one of the best performances as a passer week one. Did throw that pick, but other than that, relatively good. I said that Jacko couldn't really get it going in week one against the Ravens. Patriots ran the ball however they pleased on this Bengals defense. Now, obviously, the Bengals will try and make adjustments.
Jacko can run the ball more. Uh, and I don't know if Hollywood Brown is going to be back, but if he is back, then you're going to see an even stronger Chiefs offense than you saw last week. It is going to be a rough, it is truly going to be a rough week. Um, I mean, the Bengals would try their best. Maybe I, if there's any one quarterback that in a head to match matchup can get the best of Patrick Mahomes. It's been Joe Burrow, but early in the season when they looked as bad as they did in week one, I think it's too early for this test. I don't think that they're going to pass. I'm going to give the Chiefs the victory here, and yeah, the Bengals really should have won in week one. Now, they are looking to start 0-2, uh, which is going to be a deep hole to climb out of, but that's kind of how they've made the playoffs in the past couple years, so Nothing that they're not used to. Uh, after that, let us talk about the Steelers and the Broncos. This is a game between old quarterback of the Broncos, now playing for the Steelers, Russell Wilson game, revenge game, but Russell Wilson's not even actually going to be playing in it. They have announced that Justin Fields is preparing to start. I think that's takes away from the pizzazz a little bit. So now you've got a Bo Nix-led Broncos team going against a Justin Fields-led Steelers team. And here I'm just going to give it to the Steelers because their defense, uh, the Steelers defense week one, forced turnovers, forced a ton of punts, got a decent number of sacks. They took that new look Atlanta Falcons offense and made it look so bad. And now you get to play against a rookie. Uh, I think it's going to be very... How do I, how do I say it without being too disrespectful? Uh, easy sledding. It's going to be easy sledding on the Steelers defense. Bonix, until the end of the game, didn't look like he could get the ball to his receivers all that well. There was a lot of missed opportunities. And the Steelers... They're going to be able to force turnovers. They're going to create a lot of pressure on him. I still don't trust the Broncos' ability to run the ball, uh, especially on this defensive front. And I'm going to go with it just based on coaching and defense. Like the Steelers' offense, I don't even know how much I need to trust it. Uh, Pat Sertain might do a very good job on George Pickens. That does eliminate one of your best threats, but the Steelers last week won on field goals, and this might be a situation where they could do it again, and even if they're able to score one touchdown, that's already better than last week. So Steelers, probably a low-scoring defensive victory once again here in Week 2. <laughs> After that, we've got... Sunday night matchup between the Chicago Bears and the Houston Texans, and I'm going to give it to the Texans here. Uh, just the Bears could not get it going on offense. Very rough debut game for Caleb Williams. Uh, targeted Keenan Allen a whole bunch of times, but couldn't really connect. Uh, still needs to work on his passing, his decision making. They uh, had to abandon the run very quickly because they fell into a deep hole. Now, yes, their defense eventually got them the victory, but, like, offensively, they were among the worst in the league. Uh, you could put them right there with, like, the Falcons and the Panthers and uh, some of these teams that looked truly atrocious on the offensive side. Like, even though the Titans had so many points that they gave away, they still got more going than the Bears. The Bears just could not get the ball down the field uh, all that well. Texans, on the other hand, their defense, it didn't hold up the best, but it, it was against Anthony Richardson, who in the games that he played last year sh showed that he was good, and once again he showed that he was good even in the loss. Uh, they got out to a strong start. I think that they're going to do that again. Um, well, I guess they didn't get off to a strong start. They eventually walked away with it. Uh, but yeah, the Texans, I think that they're going to get a lead early. Just keep building on it. They, with Tony Pollard, had like a very solid game last week. Uh, much better than I was expecting him to have. He didn't look the best when he was on the Cowboys as the only guy. Uh, but he took over majority of the snaps. Ty J. Spears wasn't as involved, only on passing downs. And if Tony Pollard could do that... Now you're going to see a Joe Mixon, who had 30 carries over 150 yards in week one. I think that they're going to be able to do a lot. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to give it to the Texans. <laughs> and finally, we have our Monday night matchup of week two. Uh, this is going to be 